It's official. The soft game in pickleball is dead. Or is it? In this video, I'm going to give you the definitive answer, not by speculation or conjecture, but by analyzing the play and strategy used by the best pickleball pro players on the planet. Stick around for this video because you're going to be surprised as to how definitive the answer to this question actually is. Let's get into it. Let's go ahead and dive into the breakdown. We're going to look at this rally again in slow motion. But as we do, let's agree that the top four pickleball players in the world are Ben Johns and Colin Johns and Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson, the latter two who are in this match. This is a gold medal match at the Miami Open by the APP uh, featuring Dylan and J.W. against two excellent pickleball players and athletes in their own right. Riley DeHart, who's hitting this ball here with his left hand, and Will Howells, his partner, with those fantastic pink shoes on. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few different rallies during this match to see whether the soft game is, in fact, dead. Let's go ahead and run this back one more time and see what it looks like. As we start running this rally again, first of all, no criticism of any player on the court. They're all amazing athletes and no criticism is intended of anybody. Also, no disrespect to any of the female athletes who play at the pro level. They are amazing pickleball players. However, the four players who I mentioned earlier, the Johns brothers and J.W. Dillon, are in fact the best players in the world. So looking at the approach that they bring will help us answer the question as to whether the soft game is dead. We start off with this first shot here, which is a third shot by Dillon, and then a fifth shot by Dillon. These are traditional if you want to call them old school, whatever you want to call them is fine, but they are soft game shots. There's a seventh drop by Dylan, and then finally he and JW are going to move forward. Watch this shot here by JW. He's going to reset it in again. So they're dropping and dropping and dropping four times to make it up to the MBZ. You get Dylan gets a dink here. He's just going to dink it back to Ryler, basically putting pressure on Ryler to do something here, and Ryler's going to end up making an error on his backhand dink. So this point scored by uh, Dylan and JW and consisted of nothing more than soft game shots at the highest level of pickleball. Let's contrast JW and Dylan's approach using the soft game, working their way up to the non-volley zone with a strategy that Will and Ryler are using during this match. This is an example of it in this earlier rally where Will's going to drive this ball. JW is just going to volley down at Ryler's feet, creating an error. And what you see here is a difference where Ryler and Will simply can't get into a rhythm because they're trying to use a fast game approach. Now, this is a little bit earlier in the match. I'm going to show you two uh, rallies in the sequence here. The first rally here with Will and Ryler using a drive from the baseline. You'll see them score a point. There's a little bit of a miscommunication between JW and Dylan. They let the ball go through and a point is scored. So you may look at that and go, you know what? The fast game is super effective. Look at that. You know, they scored a point. That's how we're going to play a good pickleball. What I can tell you is if you watch this match, I'll show you later on a drive by JW and why he hits it. But JW and Dylan do not use this approach when they play pickleball. They use an entirely soft game approach. The approach of using a fast game approach from the back of the court like Ryler and Will are choosing to use also ends up with this sort of result where the ball just gets driven into the net. What happens is you'd never get into a rhythm. You never get into a flow of the game. Sometimes you'll score a point. Other times, it's an easy side out with your opponents being able to serve the next time. At the end of the video, I'll share with you three specific tips that you can uh, learn from JW and Dylan's approach to the game. And remember, these two players are two of the top four pickleball players on the planet. And I can tell you that Ben and Colin use a virtually identical approach to the game, which is a soft game-centered, very disciplined, what we call chapter one pickleball. In this rally, you're going to see a drive by JW, but what I want you to focus on with this drive is he's using the drive only to stay alive. I'll run this rally one more time, but what I want you to notice is when JW drives it, he's not driving it to hit a winner. He's driving it simply to continue the rally and extend the rally and get himself in the situation that they can hit their drops. Let's run it one more time and check it out. As we start running this back again, notice how JW and Dylan are always tapping paddles. That's amazing. And JW is one of the best in the games at flipping that paddle around. So if you want to be a pro player, make sure you work on both those techniques. But in all seriousness, what I want you to focus on here is look at the first shot that JW hits on his third. He's going to hit that third shot drive. 
But notice the type of drive he's hitting here. Right here, he's going to hit this drive. It's simply a stay alive shot here. He's just trying to keep the ball in play and get another chance. The minute that he feels comfortable hitting a drop, he's hitting a drop super high over the net, which is a spoiler, which you're going to see later. Same thing with Dylan here. You're going to see that's the fifth and the seventh. This is now the ninth. Now we're at the 11th. You see the, the patience that they have and moving forward. That ball skipped a little bit on the on the line there for Ryler, creating a difficult dink, but point scored by Dylan and JW using that approach. Let's go ahead and run through some rallies. We're going to pick up the game at 7-3 in favor of Dylan and JW in game one, and we're going to run through some rallies to show difference in strategy. What you're going to see here, though, even though they're hitting a soft game approach, they will be opportunistic. So here there's a high ball that, that JW can attack. They will attack high balls. What they're not doing is they're not attacking off low balls and they're not attacking off of the bounce until they're up at the non-volley zone line. They're only taking advantage of high punches that they can then come in and attack, sort of opportunistic approaches or opportunistic chances. They will take those, but absent those, they are going to be following a disciplined soft game approach. Hold the game tape one second because this video would not be complete without hearing from you. What's your opinion? Is a soft game alive or is it dead and pickable? Let us know in the comments down below and also let us know whether the soft game is part of your pickleball strategy. Now that you share with us, let's jump back in here and see how these pros finish this game. What you're going to see here is you're going to see a third shot drop. You see an attempt at Ernie there. There's a problem with the court positioning there and we'll cover Ernie's in another video and the, the challenges that they present to players who try and use Ernie's because we're actually going to see a double Ernie in a minute in the last rally of this uh, first game that we'll break down for you in a second. But you can see how the attempt at Ernie here by Ryler creates a two-on-one situation. It's impossible for Will to cover all of those angles, ending with a winner by JW. Ryler and Will here will call a timeout, which is a smart thing for them to do at this stage of the game. And while we're in a timeout, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and you enjoyed this type of content, Consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell notification, you'll be notified of future videos just like this. And if you enjoyed this sort of analysis, sort of this sort of game study, make sure you sign up for one of our live game studies inside our Better Pickleball Academy. I'll put a link down in the show notes. Through the magic of video editing, we are able to now rejoin the action. You can see JW and Dylan, positive partner energy. Cannot emphasize enough the importance of positive partner energy if you're gonna be playing successful pickleball doubles particularly at the highest level you want to have that. So we're going to rejoin the action at 9-3 with Dylan and JW serving in game one. And let's see what strategies they use to potentially close out this game. By the way, if you want to watch the whole game, I'll put a link down in the show notes down below. It's a good match to watch and study. You see a drive there by Dylan, which is unusual. But what did you see there? You saw a drive by Dylan and JW and he never got into rhythm right? So it's one of the few times that you'll see an attack by them, but it was unsuccessful because it did not allow him and his NJW, yeah, Dylan and JW to get into a rhythm in their uh, in their rally or to make it up to the non-bali line, which is where they're going to get their action. Here you're going to see Will driving from the baseline. Um, now you see uh, an attempt to reset once and then they move forward and they're trying to attack from there. There's a little bit of miscommunication on Respecting that X. If you want to learn more respecting the X, I'll put a link up in the show notes. You can check out our entire playlist on respecting the X. All right, we're on the second server now. Let's see what the approach is here. I think here you're going to see some third shots here by Ryler, which is really good approach here. So this is a, a very disciplined approach. Good stuff here. He's moving forward with some discipline here. That's really good stuff. Staying alive, trying to move forward here. He loses discipline. Tries to attack from the middle of the court. That is just not going to get the job done at this level of play. Again, no criticism. Ryler's an amazing amazing athlete. I've had the opportunity to meet him in person and uh, play some practice games with him, and he's an amazing player. But when you're playing against you know JW and Dylan, uh, that they're, they're super disciplined players like they are, uh, you're going to have to bring at least that same level of discipline in order to prevail against them or in order to compete uh, more closely uh, against them. All right, let's see what JW and Dylan bring to the party in their rally. What do you think you're going to see here? Exactly what you expected. A third shot, and it's a, he has an opportunity to attack because of a high uh, punch off the bounce by Ryler. So again, JW will attack high balls when there's an opportunity to do so, but he's not attacking balls uh, that are either 
uh, off the bounce, uh, off the line, um, when there's just not really a good situation for him. He's looking for good opportunities like that one there. All right, here we're going to see, I believe this is a double earning. So this is a rare event you're going to get to see here. Uh, but let's focus on JW and Dylan on the other side. You're going to see a third shot. You see a attempted Ernie there. But because Dylan and JW are very good with their discipline and their court position, they don't get affected by the Ernie. You're going to see a second Ernie attempt here by Will, and it goes out. So if you're thinking about adding Ernie to your game, maybe hit that pause button and wait for our next video that discusses the benefits of the Ernie's. Because when you look at the best players, again, Dylan, JW, Ben, and Colin, the earnings happen, but they're few and far between. All right, let's jump into three specifics that will help you uh, uh, take on the approach of Dylan and JW in your play. We're going to go back to the beginning and show you the rally that we started this whole video with, and then we're going to focus on three areas that are very specific that you can use to bring into your own game. Some of these are counterintuitive, like this first one here. Look at the height of this shot by Dylan. Most players do not hit the ball that high on their drops. That is a mistake. You don't want to you do not want to hit the ball into the net. The second thing we're going to focus on is court position. You'll notice that Dylan and JW are going to remain at or near the baseline until it is appropriate to move forward. They're not going to move forward prematurely. And then the last tip is this split stepping at the point of contact by their opponents. It allows Dylan and JW to get their body set and to deal with the next shot as well as possible. And then continuing a disciplined approach, making it their way to the non-bali zone line allows them to earn a point with very little risk and using entirely a soft game approach. So if there's a question in your world as to whether the soft game is alive and well, remember the soft game is not only alive and well, it is a strategy used by the best teams in the world to win gold medal after gold medal. Here's another pro level strategy video for you to check out. And if you want to join me for a full and 60 minutes live game study inside our Better Pickleball Academy, I'll put a link here and you can join us there. Until our next time, be well.